Hello and good evening. Welcome to Business Building Business brought to you live each week by the Cosmopolitan Chamber of Commerce. For those of you that don't know, the Cosmopolitan Chamber of Commerce is the second oldest minority trade and business association in the country. We were established in 1933 and we have a very rich history. Our uh, members have come from all walks of life all over the city of Chicago as well as, as, well as the suburbs. Our program, built Business Building Business, we feature for-profit and non-profit organizations each week just to talk about what they're doing in the city of Chicago. And this week we have a wonderful organization. It's called ArtReach and they are going to talk specifically about a project that they have or program that they have called Project FIRE. Our guest this week, our first guest is Karen Reyes and she is the executive director at uh, for Project FIRE. This is so, the information, the organization is so timely in our community. They uh, do art therapy, specifically glass blowing, as a way to address uh, violence and, uh, in our city. And most of their program participants are victims of gun violence. Karen can explain a lot more to you. Welcome, Karen. Thank you so much, Rhonda. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. And again, this is such a timely conversation. And we often talk about the gun violence that's going on in our city. And we say, who's doing something about it? What's being done about it? And it's programs like this, grassroots programs that are successful and that are really doing what it takes to help stem the gun violence in our city. So let's just get right to it. Tell us about uh, ArtReach as well as Project FIRE. So ArtReach is a 501c3 nonprofit here in Chicago that is dedicated to empowering and connecting people through the practice of visual arts. Um, we do that mostly through um, hot glass programming as well as ceramics. Those are our um, main media. And um, we work in East Garfield Park is our home base, okay. but we serve Chicagoans all throughout the city. Mm -hmm. um, Project FIRE is like our our baby, our flagship program, um, and it is a partnership with Healing Hurt People Chicago, mm -hmm. which is another nonprofit organization that's hospital-based trauma intervention. Um, and so we work with Healing Hurt People to, um, to find people who've been injured by traumatic gun violence in the city. They meet them in the hospital, and then they are um, Healing Hurt People provides caseworkers who okay. are trained trauma intervention specialists. Mm -hmm. And um, they are invited to apply for programs like Project Fire. Project mm -hmm. Fire is pretty unique because we partner glass blowing and art making with some of the psychoeducation um, and um, coping mechanisms for trauma. Um, it's also a youth employment program, so mm -hmm. our participants are paid for their time. Okay. Um, they receive a, um, wraparound services, including healthy meals every time they come in, um, child care if necessary, mm -hmm. safe transportation to the studio, whatever that means. Some people are safe on CTA, other people don't feel safe in CTA and need sure. lift and other rides. Mm -hmm. um, we also, they get um, full case management through Healing Hurt People, uh, instruction in glass blowing, of course, mm -hmm. um, and other supports as needed. So if you are a victim of uh, violence, is it all gun, is it just gun violence or any, or just violence? Um, traumatic street violence, uh -huh. so that's, you know, unfortunately as we know in our city that's almost 100% gun violence. Sure. There mm -hmm. have been some people who mm -hmm. um, have experienced violence, you know, knives and other um, mm -hmm. implements, but um, unfortunately in our city and in our country the main implement for violence um, Amongst, our, amongst each other tends to be gun violence. The gun violence. And are there certain hospitals that participate uh, that are part of, is it helping, hurting? Healing hurt he people. Healing Chicago. hurt people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they work at Stroger and um, Comer hospitals. Mm -hmm. um, so Project Fire was co-founded by Pearl Dick, who is our artistic director at Art Reach Chicago and a veteran glassblower, mm -hmm. and Dr. Bradley Stolbach, who's a um, clinical psychologist at the University of Chicago, and um, 
works at Healing Hurt People Chicago. So um, this is clinical based. Yeah. You know, there's some evidence, you know, that you, you yes. know, uh, research and everything, data. Yeah, and, data and Project Fire started as a faculty grant that he had ah. to do research. Um, so, yeah, everything's research based. It's based on a model that came out of Drexel University. That, mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot behind it. Uh -huh. um, we are careful not to call ourselves an art therapy program because okay. we aren't trained Sorry. art therapists. Mm -hmm. um, but we do feel we do harness the therapeutic power of sure. art making. Um, so it's a this you know distinction of training and, and degree. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we at Outreach we tend to use art as a healing mechanism in all of our in all media for all people that we serve. Now, is this uh, unique to Chicago, or is this a program all over the country? Um, this is unique to Chicago. So this is the only program like this that partners glass blowing with um, psychoeducation and trauma intervention. Mm -hmm. um, there are other programs that are trauma informed that um, use arts, arts based, arts influenced mm -hmm. programs. Um, but certainly, especially the the addition of glass blowing makes it very, very distinct. And uh, do you partner with other businesses or, or organizations, and what does that partnership look like? Um, yeah, we partner lots of different ways. Um, one important one, of course, is with um, foundations that help fund the program. So as a nonprofit, we have to fundraise through um, small foundation grants as well as um, donations from local businesses. Like we have fundraising events where mm -hmm. we have um, sponsorships, uh, local businesses like uh, Blick Arts, mm -hmm. as well as lots of food sponsors who provide the food and mm -hmm. beer and things that make our parties um, successful. Um, we also take commissions, so we work okay. with um, local businesses that sell, especially ones that um, either emphasize local and sustainably made artworks or art that's made by young people in Chicago and has a story behind it. So a couple examples of those are um, we work with Packed with Purpose, which is an, a group that makes um, corporate gifts that are oh. a little more meaningful than a cheese basket or something sure. like that. So mm -hmm. all locally sourced um, and artist made oh. items. So we provide um, glass wine stoppers that oh, are made. Nice. And your your participants, program participants. Yeah, that, those are all made by Project Fire. Wow. Um, and um, so we provide you know those it, uh, in quantities of a hundred, and then mm -hmm. they put them into a basket with wine glasses, wine, and mm -hmm. other things like that. Um, we also sell work at Wolf Bait and Beat Girls, which is a Logan Square um, store that um, specializes in Chicago-made items. Um, we had a big commission for the Chicago Bulls where we oh, made. Oh, tell us about that. Um, we made um, repeat bulls heads. So that was a very complicated one because they had to be sort of sculpted to see how to make a, a bull's head that looked like the Chicago mm -hmm. Bulls. Um, and then a mold was made so that the glass could be blown into the mold so they could be somewhat um, similar. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a lot of prototyping and editing and changing, okay. um, but so we made um, tens of those. I can't remember exactly how many. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've also done some commissions for awards, so like Asian Americans I Advancing see. Justice mm -hmm. provides an award um, at their events, and instead of buying a trophy that's you know made wherever, mm -hmm. they have a handmade glass um, award for their Beautiful. uses. Yeah, and these are all these are not famous artists. These are people that came into your program and and how long does well I'm gonna save this question for uh, our, our next guest who actually is an <laughs> instructor there but uh, have uh, have other organizations or other communities reached out to you how, how can this uh, you know program be you know citywide or other cities or um, well we participate in a lot of um conferences mm -hmm. with both with people interested in um, trauma intervention so on sort of the the psychology side and the social work side, um, as well as like we were part of an art art is response to violence conference. Um, so we try to spread the word and really engage with other communities throughout the country to learn from them and and, and share our learnings. Mm -hmm. um, that's one way that we sort of s spread. And um, I I do think you know we're very context based. So we have connection. You know Chicago has its own particular challenges and strengths mm -hmm. and we really try to harness those so you know rather than trying to replicate ourselves and you know 
force it into a different um, setting. You mm -hmm. know, it's more about figuring out how to ad adapt what we've learned and apply it other places. And oh, I see. So that's one thing that we've been doing. And um, in 2019, we're expanding to add a women's cohort to Project mm -hmm. Fire. So. So the program is all uh, males right now? Yeah, so mm -hmm. currently Project Fire serves all young men. Mm -hmm. um, ages? Um, ages 14. Healing Heart people had a limit where um, the their participants had to be, have been injured before they turned 18. I see. They're now expanding their age range mm -hmm. um, because they found that there were a lot of people who were older than that who needed the support. Mm -hmm. So now we're going up into 30s. I see. Um, mm -hmm. Into adult groups. Um, but so we're adding a women's cohort because we need to support young women in For the way sure. that they they are injured differently than young men. Exactly. So it's a different set of circumstances. Right. Um, audience, please remember that this is a call-in show and you uh, feel free to call in if you have any questions of Karen about Project FIRE. The phone number is on your screen. It is 312-235-1077. Do we have a caller? Go right ahead. Good evening, Karen. Good evening, ma'am. How are you doing this evening? Hi. Hi. Good, thanks. I'm wondering about that glass blowing. Oh, I love those glass blowing, the roses, all of that. I know that's really, really hard work and very, very probably relieves a lot of tension when you blow your glass out. But what I'd like to know is who teaches you how to do that? And uh, is there a class they go to? I mean, if a kid wants to come there and he don't feel good, feels like making something beautiful, who teaches them? You, your organization teaches them? to make those uh, the glass things that you're talking about? That's right. So you are going to get to meet one of our instructors momentarily. One, uh, that's the second guest here. Uh -huh. um, and also um, artist Pearl Dick is a um, really veteran glass blower who's been uh -huh. blowing, for, blowing glass for decades oh, now. It. And she's the master teacher and so she teaches instructors underneath her and they um, so this, this, so this is basically to help the mental people out a little bit to make them feel better, right? In the sense that we're all, we all need that sort of release. Yeah. So we Project Fire do. helps people who've been injured, but Art Reach helps everybody. We all right, need healing right. and help. I, I, I know that the Chance the Rapper had donated a million dollars towards the mental health for anything. Did you guys get a little bit of that, or? <laughs> so because far, we sure could use it. Yeah, we sure could use it. I know that, um, you know, I, um, I would think that Healing Hurt People Chicago would be a really great recipient of that, and then their partners with us in Project Fire. Absolutely. So hopefully Chance will come through with that money. <laughs> yeah, there you go. He's a good kid. If he runs for mayor, I'm voting for him. <laughs> I think you wouldn't be alone. <laughs> That's it. You all have a blessed evening. and Be safe, and God bless you. Good night now. Thank you. Calling. Good night, You're and welcome. thanks so much for calling. Well, Karen, what uh, I know you have some other exciting things coming up. Uh, with Project Fire, there's something uh, an open house this weekend. You might want to share that with our, our audience yeah. as well. Yeah. So if you're interested in Project Fire and art reach and glass blowing and ceramics, you can. It's timely. You can come this weekend and visit us. We're part of the Chicago Architecture Foundation's Open House Chicago tour, which is an open house throughout the whole city. We're one of the sites. Um, so you can visit us um, Saturday or Sunday, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. We're at 2651 West Lake, so that's Lake in California. Um, and there will be glass blowing going on the whole time. We're going to be blowing a lot of glass pumpkins to get ready oh, for fall. Oh. Um, and there's also some hands-on activities. You can mm -hmm. participate in a community mural. There's some, going to be some clay demonstrations and activities. And you can meet the young men of Project Fire along with our, your second guest today. So our last caller, remember that. That's this weekend at yes. Lake and... And California. And, and California. Saturday and Sunday. Okay. Thank you. Well, Karen, I have one last question for you. How is Project Fire supported and funded? Um, so we, you know, by hook or by crook is the short, <laughs> is the short answer. We um, have some generous funders. One of them is um, the Safe and Peaceful Communities Fund, mm -hmm. um, which is a, a fund that is supported by Chicago Community Trust and Polk Brothers and some other foundations. Um, the Lynx Incorporated Power and Purpose Grant is one of our most recent grants. Um, the Leo S. Guthman Fund supports youth stipends to help pay them for their mm -hmm. time. The Susan Crown Exchange. So we get lots of foundation money like oh, that. Um, of course, 
We always need more. Of course. Um, it, buying Project Fire work mm -hmm. also supports, so individuals like ourselves can buy them for gifts. Um, mm -hmm. We can go in and shop anytime at Art Reach, or we have a, a holiday bazaar where mm -hmm. you can come by. Um, that's another way that we support our work. Donations, mm -hmm. um, any of our events, a portion of it goes to that. So those are the big So ways. we can go there and sh do our Christmas holiday shopping that's at the right. studio. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, let's keep that in mind. <laughs> well, Karen, thank you so very much. I appreciate it. And our next guest is going to be uh, an instructor uh, at the program. But in the meantime, I just wanted to remind you that Business Building Business is brought to you each week by the Cosmopolitan Chamber of Commerce. And our mission is to promote the development and growth of minority businesses and to assist minority businesses uh, with their entrepreneurial goals. And this is throughout the state of Illinois. We provide technical assistance, business and educational programs, certification and procurement guidance, technology support, and access to capital. And we are back with uh, an instructor who has been with uh, Project FIRE since its inception. Meet Nkosi Barber. And Nkosi is going to talk about his experience. See, he's, you know, really in the trenches. He has the mm -hmm. hands-on experience at um, uh, Project FIRE. And I hear that, uh, I heard that you guys refer to a self-group. Exactly what is that? So self group is well first off self main safety emotion lost and future. Mm -hmm. So every uh, last hour of the group we have the self group where we like like we state everybody names and then we like see how everybody feeling because you know how it's only three days out the week that we meet so you never know what happened in between those days so. See how everybody feeling if they up or down, you know, just to check on each other. And then, you know, we eat also. Mm -hmm. So we uh, we have ladies bring us healthy food to come eat and, you know, kind of like a brotherly thing. We all sit at the table and eat. But most importantly, we talk about just um, maybe serious issues that, that happen in their life or in my life or just any just anyone mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. so just, to, um, just so people can have that that person to talk to because a lot sure. of these kids don't have nobody to talk to so mm -hmm. we're a group that you can bring out your feelings feel vulnerable we we understand it and just so you can feel comfortable around just, just feel comfortable to just express yourself right and get out you know if you have some anger or anything yeah get anger, it out right sadness there. yeah anything I some, love sometimes it. you don't want to talk to your parents you mm -hmm. want to talk to your to your to your friends or exactly like that. and so this is the last hour of each uh, class you do this you do self and, yeah. and repeat that again what's self self what self means uh, yes safety emotion lost and future wow I love that. And so, what drew you to glass blowing, and what draws other people to it? Oh, uh, okay. So, what drew me to glass blowing? Well, I was trying to um, get out of school, mm -hmm. and I was going to an alternative school, which is a charter school called Little Black Pearl. It was on the south side, Forty Seventh and Greenwood. And I met this lady. She seen the drawing I did. She was like, "We have a glass blowing in the back of a glass studio in the back of our school." Me not knowing what that was or anything, so I went back there and like she just dripped like a piece of glass on the ground and like melted, and I just like fell in love with it. Really, I know. So, so yeah. that's yeah. how I I got into it, and mm -hmm. that's what just drew me into it because I never seen nobody do it before. Like every time I brought it up, people's like, "Huh, what?" Right, like, glass what? blowing. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, well, I think what what what, what draws people to do it is the uniqueness to it. Because you can't just like, I don't know, just go to different stores and just see like hand blown glass, mm -hmm. glass stuff. Because it's like, it's just so expensive. Only a certain amount of people can do it because the expenses. Mm -hmm. It's so, a specialty item. And, mm -hmm. just, and, and I've seen in Cozy's work. She does <laughs> beautiful work. In fact, all of the students, the program participants, have beautiful work there. <laughs> Great. And so. You know, the whole purpose behind uh, Project FIRE, of course, is the gun violence. Do you think uh, Project FIRE uh, can prevent gun violence in our city? Uh, not at all. Mm -hmm. Nope. So, only, only, why I, only why I say that, because I guess the gun violence goes so deep, 
So it you you can't change what's like that's gonna keep going on because stuff is always gonna happen. But what you can change is the some of these kids' mindsets and help them make different decisions. Okay. And maybe that can spread on to other people that um that decide to change their life and see something better in life than what they're doing. Well, if you ask me, that boils down to preventing gun violence. <laughs> and, I mean, you, you may not look at it, that, but that's very important what you said, that what you just said. Actually, it's very powerful. Mm -hmm. I, in fact, repeat that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when you, um, when you, when you um, get it, basically when you, when you get, uh, hold on, I'm sorry. That's okay. Take your so, time. So... What was the question again? We talked about can Project Fire prevent gun so violence. So I, I, I did say no because it's just generations and generations of people getting sure. hurt and people, it's not easy to forgive. Mm -hmm. But the people that we do, that we do get in this glass blowing stuff, it shows them a different life. It helps them see like it's more to life. So when they spread that to others, it makes them think and make them want to do better that maybe it's more to doing this or doing that. Maybe my life will live longer if I do something positive. Absolutely. And and to see them form something beautiful, like in Kosi said, you start off with this little, you know, drop. <laughs> and to see it transform into a, a, a uh, I saw, uh, I went to the studio and they made Eskimos and uh, who made uh, the... Uh, we, we made Chester Cheeto. Yes, that's what I was going to say, <laughs> Chester Cheeto. Was that yours that I saw? No, that, that was actually um, a participant that used to be in a program, but he, he still contact us and we still support him and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I guess family issues or whatever, but that was him. That was like one of our veterans. Yes. Yeah. Glad, uh, project Fire when we first started. And how long have you been an instructor? I've been an instructor for three years since the program has started, mm -hmm. but I kind of been an instructor since I began to start Glass One. Oh, okay. So, cause. Um, and, and how does it make you feel as a person when when you're the, when at the end of the day at the end of your class and you know you have all these people like you said that bring so many different issues to the table what what impact that does that have on you um it has a great impact on me because it's just making people happy i just know a lot of times i've been depressed and I'm like hey, what can i do and mm -hmm. what can i what avenue can i go and we giving them an avenue to create happiness, mm -hmm. and which a lot of them, you know, don't experience when they outside. So it makes me feel good that I can make somebody smile and and want to come back and create. Exactly, I love it. And so, what what skills can people take from Project Fire that they can apply to the rest of their lives? Um, skills. So. The, to work with each other, because a lot of these kids come from different neighborhoods different backgrounds, mm -hmm. never know what, you never know that neighborhoods might be rival or exactly. something like that. Mm -hmm. So you but, have to act as a mediator sometimes? No, not at all. Okay. Because when they come to the space, mm -hmm. we give that type of love that they don't want to mess up this opportunity that, that we actually presented them because we don't get a lot of opportunities. Mm -hmm. So... I kind of. Mm. Do you ever have, uh, uh, because they are from different neighborhoods and different areas, you know, have mm -hmm. you ever witnessed not so much towards yourself, but mm -hmm. just conflict, you know, within the group? And how do you handle that? No, actually, I don't see really any conflict. Okay, so, so you're you're just in a utopia over there, at Project Fire. Okay, huh? Yeah, it's <laughs> it's people might might argue or might not disagree, mm -hmm. but. We we grown so much as a family and as a brothership. Oh, That's just okay. some like a, like if you had a sister or something and y'all yap better or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's all love that you're not gonna harm that person. You, you're gonna get mad, you know. Take a couple of days. We're gonna come back, mm -hmm. kumbaya. Right. And we finna get back to working. Good. And and do all of the uh, program participants get to uh, sell their uh, uh, you know what they make their uh, their art? Yeah, yeah, yes, they can. They, they, um, 
So the participant gets seventy percent, and the organization get thirty percent. Oh, really? So, that's so they going actually back get there. paid for it themselves. Oh, oh yeah, okay. most definitely. Oh, okay. And how how many students do you have at a time? The I, I feel like the most that we didn't have was like fifteen. At one time, yeah. in, in a group. Yeah. How do you manage a, that? So, so we we break them up in like different uh, different days. So like. We had like three days. Uh, one day it'd be like six students. The other day mm -hmm. be like another six students. Then the other day everybody can come. So, so everybody can know each other and you know mm -hmm. interact and stuff like that. So. And are you the only instructor? Well, it's me. Well, I'm the co-instructor, and it's Pearl, okay. which is the boss okay. instructor, and I have two other uh, instructors called um, Kate. And Cam, mm -hmm. so they help. They help me with a lot, and yeah. If it wasn't for them, I couldn't do it by myself. And so, what? What? Do you, how do you deal with it on um, when you're not having a good day? When I'm not having a good day, the the kids make me have a good day. That is wonderful. I love that. The kids make you have have a good day. Yes. And uh, do you have a preference with the younger ones or the older ones or? They've all made an uh, impression on your life. They all made an uh, impression on my life, and just to see them to grow. And I, I'm, I'm 25, but just to see you like somebody that's 14, and then to grow to 16, you like, mm -hmm. oh man, the change and the maturity that they have in is makes me feel good. And how long can they stay in the program? Well, I, um, I, I, I'm not really sure because we we expanded. We have a we have a student that's 21 mm -hmm. that's in the program, and it, it's, it's hard to let them go because I remember when I was 21 and I was like, dang, I can't do this anymore, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and I don't want to never take that from them because sure. you might be lost after that. Exactly. We can help you for another avenue or something. You know? mm -hmm. Well, it looks like we have to wrap it up. This has been a wonderful conversation, and it was great speaking with you and Kosi. Mm -hmm. I wish you lots of luck, lots of success, and the same for Project FIRE. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, and thank you, audience, for tuning in to Business Building Business, brought to you by the Cosmopolitan Chamber of Commerce. We'll see you next week. Have a good evening.